All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Chancellor Jackson, who is a coach, entrepreneur, and author. Chancellor, how you doing? Blessings and balance to you, Tim. Blessings and balance to everyone that's tuning in right now, man. Shout out to all y'all, for real. There we go. There we go. Love to hear it, man. And we're happy to have you on. We like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. For sure. Um, Chancellor K. Jackson is the name. Once again, born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Played football a good portion of my life. So that played a major role into just developing me as an individual, you know what I'm saying, my character, skill sets, and just my spirit all in all. Um, Football player, student athlete, for sure. I embodied it to the fullest. Um, Got to play in college for four years down at Stetson University, where I obtained my bachelor's degree in communication and media studies. After I graduated, I landed my first job teaching English to children in China. Um, And that was an amazing experience. Best experience I've had by far. Um, I highly encourage everybody to travel abroad, of course, but if you can live abroad someplace else, highly recommend it. Um, You ain't got to be there long. You know what I'm saying? Just get I'd love to get your feet wet and get immersed within the culture thoroughly. Um, you'll, you'll just learn a lot about yourself and life in general. Um, it's very enlightening. So China was absolutely amazing. I enjoyed every minute of my time in China. And I only did six months because I ended up getting locked up out there and did 14 days in a Chinese penitentiary. Um, I was locked up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 15 men to one cell, nine wooden beds, three soups a day. And literally all I had was one Tupperware bowl and one plastic spoon. Um, and I'm here to tell you I did 14 days. As you read the book, no information is given to me in regards to what's, okay, I'm getting arrested. What's going to happen next? How this whole thing going to play out? Nobody knows uh, this is happening to me. Um, and I made contact with anybody until a full weekend. Um, so, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very great read, great read. Um, so once I was released, got deported from the country immediately, came back to America, back to square one all over again. You know what I'm saying? Adversity, you know what I'm saying, showed his ugly head, but adversity introduced the man to himself. Um, so just a test of the mind, a trial of the mind to test the resolve of the soul. Um, so like, how are we going to bounce back and utilize my experience teaching in a different country? I was like, I knew that was open doors for me. And it did, so I'm still in education. Um, I fell into coaching football. Hey, hey, you trying to coach? Shit, what's up? Let me, <laughs> I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing else to do right now. And now here it is, uh, year five. It's, uh, go with it's going to be year five um, as a uh, coach in high school football. Um, so that's been the journey. I also coach at risk, at risk teens in my county. Um, so kids that got locked up for drugs or locked up for doing just hot stuff. Um, we use 14 days in, a, in Beijing as part of our lessons to pull out life skills from. Um, and I also coach aspiring authors now. So anybody out there with an idea or concept for a story, but don't know how to go about putting it on paper, or you've already written a story, but don't know how to go about publishing, tap in with your boy. I can get, I can walk you through either process, you know what I'm saying? Or both of them need be. Um, uh, in addition to all of that, <laughs> uh, also, on my own publishing company, which all my books are published through and my services ran through. <clears throat> and I own a car rental service. You got a little car rental service going on. A car so, rental? Yep. Love to so hear it. Just, yeah, man, just running a couple of marathons, man, trying to get established, man, that's it. There we go. Tell us a little bit about what you do for fun outside of running the businesses and coaching. Uh, working out, anything to do with football. Um, definitely just hanging out with tribe, you know what I'm saying, family, friends, and just powwow and relaxing. Um, yeah, that's what I enjoy doing. Traveling as well, you know what I'm saying, exploring, sitting out in nature, you know what I mean, just on that type of time. I got you. I got you. Well, just curious, you broke up a little bit there when you were talking about uh, your book, 14 Days. Why did you end up getting locked up? And what was the, you got you said extradited or you left, you got sent back to the U.S. in 14 days. Tell, just tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so um, I got locked up for 1.4 grams of cannabis. Um, I was in my apartment, just got done pre-gaming, finna get ready to go to an event to meet some friends and colleagues. Um, but prior to me walking out the door, 12 knock on the door. You know what I'm saying? It's the police. Yep. So, of course, they question me about drugs. I'm 
sitting here playing the fool like I don't know what they're talking about. They drug test me right there on the spot. Um, and once I failed the drug test, yeah, so it was, it was over with after that. <laughs> so rest of me, um, went to two different precincts. Um, then what finally took me to the actual facility where I was housed um, for 14 days and uh, locked up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 15 men to one cell, nine wooden beds, three soups a day. And literally all I had was one plastic bowl and one plastic spoon, 14 days straight. Dang. And you got, do they send everybody that is American and gets locked up there back to the U.S.? Or was yours a special yeah. case? Well, no, nah, well, any foreigner, wherever you're from, you're immediately deported to yeah. whatever, you know what I'm saying, back home to wherever you, you re- reside. <laughs> you get, they get, yeah, they get you up out of there immediately. <laughs> immediately. I after after doing that, you be like, "Shit, man, let's go, <laughs> <laughs> let's go, man." I I got a full experience in China. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying. Did you become sure. fluent in Chinese while you were there? I nah, I just I knew I took it upon myself to start learning a little bit of the language before I went out there. So I knew just just enough just to get by. Very very basic. You know what I mean? As far as having a full in depth conversation, it's it's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening, Captain. Right. Uh, yeah, so. So yeah, I just knew just enough, just so I could work my one. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't just out there like a deer in headlights. Yeah. For sure. I got you. I got you. Well, tell us a little bit more about your motivation. What really gets you up and keeps you going every day? Um, man, I just got a chip on my shoulder, bro. I've always been an underdog. Put it down. I've been an underdog my entire life, bro. Mm-hmm. Literally, and everything I I wanted to pursue. Football is my very first love and passion. Um, but I ain't start playing until eighth grade, thirteen years old. Most of my peers were playing since they was four and five. So knowledge of the game, especially the physical aspect of the game, I lacked, yeah. you know what I'm saying, severely. Um, so it took me a year just to get acclimated mentally and physically to the game. And once I caught up to speed, then it was just a grind trying to work my way up to varsity. Um, and I didn't really get to start on varsity until my senior year, for real, for real. Um, so with that being said, coming into in, in the senior season, I don't have any offers, any uh, interest, no colleges looking at me whatsoever. And it ain't like my coaches is putting forth any effort to try to push me either. So um, I knew college football is something I wanted to do, I've been wanting to do. Um, so it wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know what I'm that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, how are we going to do it? Shit, we got to get it get it through the mud, you know what I'm saying? Just like we had to do with football, you know what I'm saying? At least just playing. So I was marketing myself, pu- pushing my uh, highlight tape to coaches, hitting coaches up, emailing coaches, DMing them on Twitter, DMing them on Facebook, you know what I'm saying? I did this for months, you know what I'm saying? Hours on hours on end. Um, ended up – I went to Stetson's uh, summer camp, football camp, going into my senior year. So I applied to the school. Ended up getting accepted. Got a bunch of academic scholarships. So I hit up the coach like, hey, bro, I got woo woo You know what I'm saying? Same spiel. Uh, ended up going down there on a visit, academic visit to get more scholarship money. But I'm like, yeah, well, I'm down there. Let's let's tap in. You know what I'm saying? I love to meet with y'all again. The coach, the DB coach, remember me. So we got it. Uh, got to meet up and chop it up. And, and next thing I know, my partner, I'm back home. You know what I'm saying? My partner sent me a screenshot. Hey, bro, you on Stetson's roster, bro? <laughs> Number 29. I was like, oh, shit. Like, damn. That's wild. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like not to not play until your senior year and have nothing going. And you made that happen. I made that happen. You know what I'm saying? I got my I got my foot in the door. I'm pretty much a walk-on for sure. And it's a D1 school. Level I wanted to do it at. Hey, boy, you hard. But hey, a grind is just beginning. <laughs> the grind is just beginning. You know what I'm saying? It's college ball now. It's strictly business. So that was another phase in it. My freshman year, I'm going crazy in fall camp. My fr- my fall camp freshman year, I'm going crazy. I earned a starter spot on the uh, on the uh, uh, nickel package on defense. So first game of the season, we playing Warner University at their house. In second quarter, they got the ball on their side of the field. So it's a passing situation. Last two minutes, say send a nickel package out, out out there. My very first time stepping on the field as a college football player, I made the tackle, forced the fumble, and recovered it all in the same play. Mm. I bet you know what I'm saying? Playing time after that, didn't you? But I ain't touched the field the rest of that season, bro. Are you serious? I ain't touched the field. I can't say. I wasn't giving no explanation. Nor was I finna go 
try to go talk to them and do no, nah, I ain't finna do all that, bro. You know what I'm saying? They, whatever reason it is, they you know what I'm saying it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I just know I'm used to shit not going my way. <laughs> I'm used to things not going. I, it ain't me going through something without no adversity. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's another phase. So I just like man, just it definitely affected me for sure. It affected me. Um, but hey. Just took it to the chin, bro, and just grinded. I ain't really get to start for real, for real. Add up my position to my senior year, just like high school all over again. You know what I'm saying? Um, so now the college and came to football over with. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, bro, you done did it. You know what I'm saying? You played, do you want football? You know what I'm saying? You did what a lot, millions of high school athletes wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Some actually got to make it to this level, but still a lot that didn't finish. You know what I mean? So, so like, bro, you this is something to be, you know, what I'm saying, take pride in, bro. You didn't did something that you always wanted to do, and now you say, can't nobody take that away from you. You know, you know when you put your mind to something, hey man, the sky's the limit. So now this this chapter in this phase of life being over, who are you? What's next? What do you want out of life? What slash who do you aspire to be? But what do you even like to do? Yeah. What's your purpose? You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't answer. It. I couldn't. I couldn't answer any of these questions. Um, but I'm like, shit. Well, we gotta start somewhere. And I'm like, shit. I just started applying for jobs, bro. As soon as the football season, because I already knew the league. I'm like, bro, the league is dead. <laughs> the league is dead. I've been faced enough politics just in high school and college. I can't even imagine at the professional level. When, oh, ch- my child, please. I'm good. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. Uh, I've got this goal. i got D1 goal off the list. I mean, I'm content with that. So now it's like, boy, it's time for the next phase. You know what I'm saying? So I got to re-identify myself all over again. Got to find a new identity. And like I said, I just started applying for jobs. I was mainly applying for corporate positions, S- sales, marketing, management, that whole nine. I'm landing interviews. I'm talking about getting flown out, put up hotels, the whole nine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not landing a damn thing, no. I did this process about eight months. I ain't landing nothing. I done graduated. I'm back home. Like, bro, what is going on? Yep. But it's like, hey, man, that's just it's, my journey has always been like that. You know what I'm saying? Got to make some shit happen. You got to make it happen. Um, so, it. When me, I'm like, clearly corporate ain't for you, so we're gonna try <laughs> try to find something else. Well, we gonna, you know what I'm saying? Let's work with your strengths. You good at talking and working with people? All right, let's just look at stuff geared towards social work, I guess. And me doing that, uh, I came across the opportunity to teach uh, English in China, and it's the first job to tell me yes, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, and then I go out there living my best life. I'm, um, you know, what I'm saying? I feel like, damn, I'm finally done, I'm reaping. You know what I'm saying? What I've been sowing. And then boom. <laughs> Follow my face. Yeah. And now I'm back home. And I'm back square one. Just like when college football came to an end. Yeah. Ask myself them questions all over again. So it's been a journey, man. For sure. Love to hear it, man. Well, now we get to jump into after hearing so much about your story, where you're going. So tell us about your dreams and goals. What's your vision for your life and all the businesses that you've started so far? Uh, definitely continue to grow this car rental fleet. I'm going to get another car added to it soon. Um, and continue to grow Cole Publications for sure. I feel like Cole Publications is going to be a household publishing company. What's um, it called? Cole Publications LLC. Gotcha. Can you spell that for me? K O R L E H Cole. And that's my middle name. Cole stands for the core, the bare essence. And that's what we do at Corle Publication. We bring back the core of writing, which I feel is just truly just self-expression. You know what I mean? I feel like people think of writing now, they automatically equate it to some school shit. You gonna think of you automatically think about it, damn well, the assignments or essays, or like you automatically equate it to some schools. I'm like, nah, but we bring back the core of writing and letting the artists have full control over their art, you know what I mean? A lot of publishing companies, it's like record labels, you know what I'm saying? They wanna have so much say so. And the process that it takes away from the art. So I call it publications. Now we're gonna walk you through this process <clears throat> um step by step, but long, you know what I'm saying, guide you through it. And once you, we reach that victory lap, you know what I'm saying, you own all your rights, you own 
uh, you're getting all your royalties that you, uh, you know what I'm saying, you're entitled to. You know what I'm saying? You, you own everything. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're just working with us, you know what I'm saying, just to get it out there on the market. It's almost like United Masters, if you're familiar with that platform, giving independent uh, music artists um, opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, own their own content and music and also build. It's like a record label, but, you know what I'm saying, of independent artists that own everything. And Elite Chopper is one of the um, big time rappers that, you know what I'm saying, catapulted the, um, the program. But yeah, that's what we own. That's the type of time we own for the show. And so I just can see that I foresee it growing and being major. <laughs> it's going to be major. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be dramatic. Um, and continue to, I definitely see myself public speaking uh, at events. Um, I'm already life coaching. So continue to do that. Um, I see myself hosting trips, you know what I'm saying, retreats and stuff, all different time. I just, just, you know what I'm saying, living my best life and while monetizing and showing people how they can do the same thing or take whatever they're passionate about and, you know what I'm saying, build they, uh, their legacy with it. You know what I'm saying? If they have no clue, then we can, I can help you find it for sure. I feel that. I feel that. So we got Grow the Car Rental Fleet, Grow Corlay Pe Publications, Public Speaking, Continue Life Coaching, Hosting Trips, Retreats, and like Masterminds and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. And so when you're thinking about growing the car rental fleet, is it like a number of cars, a revenue number you have in mind? And same thing with publications, public speaking, life coaching. Yeah. Um, definitely cars and revenue. You know what I'm saying? The more cars you got, the more money you're going to make for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So definitely you got to get, get more, just get more cars. Um, and uh, just enough that I can handle alone until I can assemble a team to get it fully automated. Um, but like that, and that's a marathon. So we're going to take this thing one step at a time. Um, what do you think and that, then we'll that you could handle alone? 10, 15, 20? Alone with me and my partner, I feel like shit. With me and my partner alone, our cars combined, that's like eight cars right there. So I feel like shit, we could probably manage a good 15 by us, like us two for sure. I got you. And how are you guys buying like 2023 cars? Are you buying luxury cars? Are you buying what? Uh, yeah, price uh, for the mo most part, um, I got to use. Car and I got a brand new car. So 2022 and the other one was 2015. Um, he got a bunch of uh, used cars as well. 2020, uh, 2019, 2018s. Um, yeah, so just anything that's economical for real, for real. Um, that's the ones that go to, that's going to get booked up the most. You know what I'm saying? Luxuries, yeah, they they, they get rented too. Um, this is not going to be as often as and well, I need a car for a few days. Just give me point A, point B. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying, riding this old luxurious, spend all the night. I ain't trying to spend all that bread. I just need yeah. something to get me from here and there. Um, so just on that type of time, for sure. Um, but just have a whole variety of just options, you know what I'm saying? Trucks, SUVs, you know what I'm saying? I definitely want to have a plethora. Um, vans, all that, <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, and then... The, Public speaking, yeah. Um, I already do open mic nights as far as uh, poetry and stuff because I got a poem for 14 days that I'd be reciting. Um, but I definitely can see myself. I'm I'm finna start taking public speaking classes. I took it in college, my freshman year in college, but I'm finna start taking uh, it again with somebody I met through Pod Match as well. <laughs> she offered to uh, give you some classes because she was like, yeah, I feel like you can be somebody that, you know what I'm saying, people pay to come speak. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to tap in with that for sure. I can already foresee it. Yep. And just, just, just taking that one step and seeing what, what come after. <laughs> for real, for, I really don't even, because I I have no clue about that one. I'm just just going, you know what I'm saying, try it out. Just I've been trying everything else out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's been working. So we're going to see what, how that go. Um, I'm sure it'll go well. And uh, what was the other thing I said? Uh, life coaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love to travel, so um, I definitely feel like I love to like, host a, a retreat somewhere. Like I'm pay for everything, you know what I'm saying? And I guess I don't know. I probably have like a lottery picking of who can attend, and you know what I'm saying? Just have different events and different excursions um, that we do 
at wherever we go. Um, for sure, I think that would be dope. And to document it, document it all, that content be crazy. So we're gonna be lit too now. You know what I'm saying? I, I like to turn up, so we're gonna be lit. So, hey, <laughs> content gonna be crazy for sure. That's just really on some content aspect. And I know that'll go, that'll grow for sure. And everybody gonna want to travel with you, but hey, man, let's go book a trip with Chance, man. <laughs> well, hey, well, I'm booking a trip with Chance for my birthday, bro. We, 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 we gonna turn up. Hey, I'm being, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. I got you. Hey, that's what's up. That's really cool. What are the top one to two skills? that you need to develop right now to make these dreams come true? Um, stepping out of my comfort zones in social settings. So I can walk into a social setting and will draw a lot of attention, just energy alone. Um, but far as me approaching or walking up to somebody and starting a conversation, it's not going to happen. I'm going to post up somewhere and just read the room, you know what I'm saying, read the energy. And, you know what I'm saying, if I'm with people I came with, then, yeah, that's what I'm going to be kicking it with, for sure. Unless somebody come up and talk to me, it, you know what I'm saying, I ain't going to be yeah. no type of networking going on for real, for real. I got you. I got you. So it's, I know uh, that networking is huge, you know what I'm saying, know somebody that knows somebody. 100%. It's so <laughs> And one thing I found out about networking, I was doing it in the real estate space about a year ago. And I kept networking with people and people were like, they were down to network, they were down to build relationships, but you need a vehicle of value to exchange. Mm -hmm. And so like I was networking with people and they were doing real estate deals, but I wasn't doing real estate deals yet. Like I didn't have the network to raise the money. I didn't have the consistent marketing to find the deals. And without deals, without money, you're not very valuable in a real estate transaction. So- mm -hmm. Um, I realized that I need to step back and I need to hone my skills of finding deals or raising money. And when I do that, the networking will be more effective. But it sounds like with your correlated publications, with the car rental fleet, with the life coaching, the public speaking, you already have that value vehicle. And so this really is a very relevant skill to go up to people, introduce mm -hmm. yourself, be like, this is what I do, this is how I add value to people. How do you add value to people and how can I help you? Um, I think you're right. That's a really important skill. For sure. Yeah, definitely. That's why I feel like this public speaking will help as well. Um, and really, I just got to take the initiative. That's what it boiled down to. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Well, awesome. What are the highest impact daily actions that you can be doing to tick the needle forward towards your dreams and goals? Um, taking better care of myself, for sure. Going to bed on time, eating, eating better. I work out constantly so that ain't you know <laughs> that's never an issue um but so just as far as what i'm consuming and hours of sleep i, I get and um just uh staying productive i gotta stay productive if i ain't got nothing to do then i just man i'll just fuck around <laughs> for real for real so i got to stay productive gotta have something going on for sure and i'm just used to that playing fo playing football and going to school i'm used to having a man a tight knit schedule. So quantify productive for me in terms of an action that you can take that will further the car rental fleet or further your publications business or further your life coaching. Like maybe it's like, Oh, scout out 10 cars every day or reach out to 50 authors every day or yeah, coach two clients. Like give me a quantifiable action that you can be doing every day to further one of those. Um, so working on my website, continue to improve that, um, uh, making sure you know, I, I'm already working with clients, uh, who, with their books and stuff. So making sure I check on those regularly, you know what I'm saying? Make, Cause I work fast. So it's like, you, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you working just as much as me. Oh, for sure. We're going to get it done. But it's like, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, drag people, you know what I'm saying? You got to pull them along. Come on, come on, come on. Um, speed this process up. Yeah. Uh, so you got to be a coach, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, on top of that. And then coaching football, definitely uh, just make sure I always portray a great example of what a good-spirited individual is, you know what I'm saying? Um, kids are impressionable and sponges, especially working with these kids. I'm a, I work in elementary school as a tutor. You know what I'm saying? 
you can't look up to me so much. It's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just making sure I'm definitely always, you know what I'm saying? Energy is always good. I'm, I'm here to listen and cater to their feelings and their needs outside of curriculum. You know what I'm saying? I'm a tutor, so I'm going to help you in this specific subject, but I'm a coach at the same time. And what we got to do with our players, man, we got to step away from football and got to see tap in, see how you're doing, you know what I'm saying, on a personal level, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So, you know what I'm saying? Check in, tap in, see what's going on. And you'd be surprised a lot of these kids, man, a lot of kids. I mean, we all grew up with peers that had fast lives. It's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? These kids, it's a lot of these kids are going through it. You know what I'm saying? Got nobody, no outlet for real. Uh, at least nobody they feel they can connect to and tap in. Uh, trust, really, you know what I'm saying? So I uh, continue to just, you know what I'm saying, make sure I'm always at peace with everything I got going on. Um, I never allow, can't allow what's going on on the outside to affect me on the inside. So continue to just be me and be this that positive spirit and light for everybody around me. <laughs> I'm that source for sure. There we go. There we go. What is a character trait that you most need to develop right now to make your dream life come true? Mm. Hmm. Yeah, some examples I thought of when I asked this question because I was like, if I was asked this question on the spot, it'd probably be <laughs> come up with something. I'm to think. So, yeah. when I was thinking of this, possible answers I had was like patience, discipline, focus, consistency, accountability, some of those character traits. There are others mm. that you may think of after I list those, but that's kind of the answer, one of the answers I'm looking for. Yeah, I thought of all them things you said, but I'm like, I got all of them. I'm trying to think, what don't I have? You know what I'm saying? I know it's, um, damn. I say, I'm very, I got great patience, but I still do be impatient at the same time. So I guess that's one, one thing is that's going to be a continuing work in progress for sure. But yeah, man, I got great patience though. <laughs> I got locked up in China, man. <laughs> My patience. <laughs> I got great patience, man. For yeah. sure. How do you, how do you feel you are when it comes to like perspective or thinking big or, having long-term patience, but short-term, like, speed. Does that make sense? Everything boils down to perspective. Um, and the fall before when adversity is in full throttle, like I said earlier, it introduces a man to himself or a woman to herself. It shows you the real you. And so you're back against the wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What you going to do? You going to fold? Are you going to fight? Um and especially if it's a self-inflicting one, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, we, we self-inflict ourselves a lot. Um, so definitely just take, it, it takes accountability. One, you know what I'm saying? Having that accountability to confront yourself um, about the, the matter at hand and to take whatever the lesson that needs to be learned from it, um, but never let no hard time humble us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? For sure. There we go. Well, if there were one or two people that you could meet right now, and this could be a specific person or a type of person, and they'd really help you take that next step towards your dreams and goals, who would they be and how would they do it? Uh, Nipsey Hussle. Okay. I'm sure. Yeah, Wait, I'm didn't, a... he, uh, didn't he pass away? Yeah. I got you. Uh, so I've really, you know what I'm saying? Nip is, has a huge influence on my life. Uh, I'm a big fan of his music. I've been a fan of his music since uh, high school. Um, and then I got family, my daddy from LA. So I got ties out west. So I definitely um, have been inspired by Nip tremendously. I feel like he's inspired millions of people. Um, and I'll shape everything I do around, you know what I'm saying? The foundation he he laid, you know what I'm saying? Just taking an independent route, getting it out the mud, you know what I'm saying? Taking the marathon approach. That's why we call this thing the marathon. You know what I mean? We're going to sit here and portray this ultimate poise like we've been had everything figured out. Yeah. No, nah, we, bat we battle every emotion. Yeah. We battle every emotion behind what we're getting out there right now. The only distinction quality between us and whoever else is going through this is finna go through this, already went through it. 
is that you're not gonna quit. Mm. You know, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna take the stand behind what you're getting after right now. And knowing that he already done went through it and you know what I'm saying, succeeded. Oh man, I know he got nothing but gems. He was already he been giving gems of his music this whole time, you know what I'm saying? For sure. But like as far as being able to tap in on a personal level, man, I know me and him be probably the best of friends, for sure. Yeah, that's a friend. Without a doubt. Awesome. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, R.I.P. All right, we got our thriving three now. First question, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Uh, Favorite book, 14 Days in Beijing. That's easy. There we go. There we go. Yeah, y'all going to have to go pick that up. I'm going to have to pick it up. <laughs> How long is it? How long of a read? Uh, pff, depending on how fast you read, it's fourteen chapters. But um, some people they say, but I slid that thing in a whole day. You know what I'm saying? I slid that thing in a couple of hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it ain't that long of a read. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? Working out, for sure, my boy. Weight room needed. <laughs> what's your favorite lift? Leg day, just cause it's the most tedious <laughs> day of <laughs> every other day. I have every day is designated to a uh, certain sector section of the body. So leg day is always a drag, but I begin through that shit though. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Bruh, when I was uh, I was in high school, I was lifting, I was trying to get bigger, and <laughs> I hated squats. I just, I mean, I despised them. Every- <laughs> Honestly, to this day, every time I'm about to squat, like, so I'm, I've been lactose intolerant my whole life. So I've always had kind of trouble with my bowels. This may be TMI for the podcast, but whatever. <laughs> uh, like when I look at a squat bar, it activates my nervous system and I know I'm about to squat and I got to go use the bathroom. Like that's literally what yeah. I'd be getting anxious every time. And so <laughs> when I was, uh, when I was in high school, I told myself, you're going to squat every day. Until you don't like, you don't get anxious anymore. As I went through a period of like, I was getting under the squat bar every day and just going at it so I could get more comfortable with it and stop like beating myself up over it so much. But yeah, leg day, it has a special place in my heart. There's a love hate relationship there. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, but it's so vital though. You build testosterone naturally doing that. So, yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Awesome. Well, what is one action step you can take right now to? Meet somebody, not Nipsey Hussle, because he's passed away, unfortunately, yeah. but meet somebody like Nipsey Hussle who could help you in the same way he could. Um, man, you got to continue to network, you know what I'm saying? Go to different events uh, on that type of that's geared towards <laughs> networking. Um, and uh, yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. Got to get out, get your name out here, continue to get your name out here, continue to do these interviews. I did. I'm close to reaching a uh, hundred actually documented interviews on podcast, but I've done well over a hundred for sure. Yeah. Um, so continue to just push his name, but it's, it's a lot of people that don't know who Chancellor K. Jackson is. I don't know what 14 Days in Beijing is. So I got a lot more work to do. For sure. Love it. All right. We got our final series of questions now. And these questions, they can get a little bit personal. So if you don't want to answer them, just be like, I'm a pass. And I'm well, all right, cool. We'll move on. First one is, what is one limiting belief that continues to pop up in your life, if any? Sometimes I, I doubt myself. Like, I doubt myself. I feel like everything I'm doing is... <laughs> going to waste or um, it's not purposeful or I don't feel like I have an impact on anybody for real. Um, But I know that's not the case. Yeah. That's not the case at all. You know what I'm saying? It's just things ain't where I ain't where I want to be, but you know what I'm saying? And I feel like I ain't where I want to be. And I feel like that's where um, that's what gets to me because I have so much expectations for myself. So it's just pressure that I put on myself. Honestly, it's self-inflicted. 
that's all it is. <laughs> I'm hard on myself just because. Um, but shit, I've been like this my whole life. So and I was able to accomplish a great thing. So shit, man, it's all a part of the process, man. There we go. There we go. Where do you think that those thoughts come from? The everything you're doing is going to waste, not purposeful. You don't have a real impact on anybody. Where do you think that comes from? Yeah, I don't I don't feel like I'm reaping everything I I've been sowing. Like I got shit in motion. I've accomplished some great things, but I ain't really reaping what I feel like I deserve. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. So the fact that you don't feel like you are reaping the stuff you've sowed yet is where all that stuff is coming from. Mm -hmm. But I know it's a marathon, though, at the same time. And what I said, but you're going to battle every emotion. <laughs> you're going to battle every emotion. You got to keep going. Yeah. Do you have any actions that reinforce those beliefs? So it's like you have those beliefs, those beliefs trigger a thought, those thoughts trigger a feeling, and then you act based on those thoughts and emotions. Do you have any of those actions in your life? No, nah, because it's just a thought. I'm very mindful when it comes to thoughts. Thoughts come, thoughts go. The next thing you know, you think about some unicorns or some dumb ass shit like that. You know what no. I'm saying? So it's just it's just a thought. You know what I'm saying? You have you'll have good thoughts, you'll have bad thoughts. That is all it is, simply. You know what I'm saying? It'll pass. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Love it. Well, if you were to change the limiting beliefs that will pop up in your head sometimes into an abundant phrase that would really speak to your heart, what would that phrase be? Long-winded. Running through this life like it was mine. And never settling, but setting every goal high. 1,000 burpees on the path to my own self-destruction or success. But what's a mistake without the lesson? You see, the best teacher in life is your own experience. And none of us know who we are until we fail. They say every person is defined by their reaction to any given situation. Well, who would you want to define you? Someone else or yourself? Whatever you choose to do, homie, get your heart to it and stay strong. Mm. I love that. Is that a poem you wrote? That's some quote in Nipsey Hustle the Great. <laughs> uh, I knew it was one or the other. No me. No me. Nipsey quote. I didn't get I didn't get to type all that, so I'm just gonna write Nipsey quote. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Cool, cool. Well, I want to frame this next question. We got one last question for you. So Alex Hormozy, do you know who that is? Uh-uh. He's a boss. You should check him out. <laughs> well, um, but he said that the difference between manipulation and help is intent. And I think his point here is that you're influencing people in both situations, but manipulation is about getting somebody to do something you want them to do, while help is about seeking to understand what somebody else wants and then helping them get there. Now, this question is more about helping people, not manipulation. There's a common saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I actually found out from Dr. Alan Laika, who was a guest on the show, that you can make a horse drink. You just have to salt its oats. Now, I want you to think of a person with a really fixed mindset. They're not willing to accept help. They're not willing to accept change, but they hate their life. They're not happy where they are. How can we, you and I, create an environment to salt their oats and help them change their life? Need some deep, deep, uh, need therapy. Mm. Need therapy. Um, so we can dig up some of that baggage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get some of that baggage up out of there. Um, and then once we clear all of that out, now let's take a trip. <laughs> let's go someplace you always, that person always wanted to go. You know what I'm saying? Let's spend some time there. And while we in this place, you know what I'm saying? Forget about the past. Can't predict the future. Only you live in the now. When you're, when you're thrown in an environment where you are completely, everything is taboo, you have to be so present and so in the moment. Yeah. And you have to, because you know what I'm saying? Everything is foreign, literally. <laughs> everything is foreign. You look at everything. So you're like, well, you got to be in the moment. Make sure you know what's going on. Be fully aware. Um, and 
let's just tap in. Definitely, let's go on a shroom trip, go on a spiritual journey, let's go out in nature, you know what I'm saying, and get connected. Um, and we can start working on the blueprint then, you know what I'm saying? Find out, let's find some passions, find out what you like to do, you know what I'm saying, what you good at, and let's build off of those interests that you have. And now let's, let's figure out a way we can monetize off of mm-hmm. the show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Make a dollar. There we go. Well, Chancellor, that's all we got for you, man. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Um, Man, y'all just continue to run your marathon. Um, trust the process. Trust God. And I pose this question to you. With where you are along your journey at this particular time, are you chasing a dream? Are you fulfilling your purpose? Mm. You're, you're asking me that? Or are you leaving that? Just for the that yeah, leaving it for the audience. Leaving it for the audience. That, that. Yeah, I can ponder on it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to answer me. This is for y'all to reflect on. There we go. Take that question, reflect on it. Chancellor, thanks for coming on the show. If you guys loved what he had to say, Make sure to check him out, 14 Days in Beijing. Buy a copy. Buy one for a friend. Rate oh, it, maybe. review it. Is it on Amazon? Oh, yeah. Amazon. Um, also, on my website, ChancellorKJackson.com. I also have two other books, um, You Love and You Learn and Real Love Never Dies. All three books is one long story. It's a series. Um, but the last two books are a romance saga. So it's a little spin, for sure, for sure. Um, but all great reads. Um yeah, y'all can find them on Amazon. I also got the audio book for 14 Days on uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor. Yeah, so yeah, y'all can listen to it. And I'm reading it, so it's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe for sure. There we go. That's what's up, man. Well, cool. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Thank you for watching. All the ways to contact Chancellor and get the book will be down in the show notes. We will see you on the next one. And on that note... We're out.